and we're live. What's up everyone? Welcome to my very humble channel where I've been coaching wonderful information for years and years, I believe since 2010. But let's break down the top fats on a carnivore diet because, well, that's an important thing to understand. It is all about being in ketosis. Right now, as I'm film, filming, it feels like I've got a woman outside my window with high heels on, but really it's just a horse. Clickety clackety. Okay. Now, you cannot do a carnivore diet, definitely not a keto diet, without eating high fat. I want to do another video explaining ketosis better because a lot of people don't understand. The goal is to get into ketosis, and that is the reason why we eat high fat fat, right? We're trying to drive ketosis and have a ketotic body. If your protein is too high, it'll spike your blood sugar, push down your ketones, and your body will still be dependent on glucose, just like making protein sort of like a candy bar. Now, this candy bar effect does not happen in everyone. Maybe not a candy bar, but the body can act to protein almost like a piece of bread. Some people it's like a candy bar, other people it's like start to base like a piece of bread. When you have too much protein, the body cannot chew, break down, have enough chloric acids, uh, protease, all this kind of stuff to break down the protein, then to get it through the whole digestive system, through the organs, through the liver, through the kidney to be used. Right, or well, you don't use protein from your kidneys, but it's, it's a waste product. So all of these things matter when you're trying to digest protein when there's too much of it, especially at night. For those who have a night job, a lot of people have problems because the food can get stuck in your stomach and rancidify and get rotten and destroy your sleep and give you histamine, a histamine reaction or spike your blood sugar up really, really, really high. And we don't want that. Another thing is uh, and, and the thing I want to really preface is meal timing is everything. Protein amount, protein type, fat amount, fat types are also very important. That is the subject of this video is the fats. Now, there's all kinds of fats. There is um, there's animal fats, There are there's beef, and there's lard, and there's tallow, and there's lamb fat, and pork fat, and chicken fat and turkey fat and ghee and there is plant fats like monounsaturated fats um there is olive oil and avocado oil and then you have saturated fats like coconut oil and we got the seed oils but we don't go we don't use the seed oils even though some of them are monounsaturated fats a lot of them a lot of them are pufas which are polyunsaturated fats which can be very very inflammatory to the body and we don't like that okay what are the top fats on a carnivore diet clearly it's going to be the animal fats you really don't need the monounsaturated fats in a high amount people will when I recommend coconut oil, people think it's for the fat, but I'm not, um, not coconut oil, rather uh, olive oil. People are thinking that I'm wanting to use the monounsaturated fats when I recommend that. I recommend these monounsaturated fats like olive oil and avocado oil because they are, the structure of the fat is shorter in its fatty acid chain rather than in, in uh, a short uh, a short triglyceride rather than a longer one, which you need a gallbladder to digest. So when people are having difficulties with their gallbladder, I might put them on a plant fat like olive oil or avocado oil for the short term until they can get the sludge, uh, uns to get their gallbladder unsludgeified, which means that the bile salts become very thick and they should be in a very like loose and liquidy type of sub um, structure rather than thick. When they're thick, they have, they have a difficulty to be released into the bile ducts, into the plumbing, meet the fat, break it down so you can make the freaking ketones. Because if the gallbladder is not functioning properly, and I'm telling you with all the consultations I'm doing, so many people have an underlying gallbladder problem and they're not aware of it. And even though they think they're doing a high fat diet, 
they're not. They're always doing a moderate to low. They're like, I'm not, I ask people in the consultations, okay, how much fat are you consuming? They're like, mm, like a tablespoon or two. And I'm like, uh -uh. like per meal. No, you got to go higher to get into ketosis, especially in the beginning, because your body has to go and break down these fatty acids and convert them into ketones in your liver to use them in your energy cycle so you've got energy and you feel amazing you can build muscle you can also get fat into the heart muscles and into the skeletal muscles for energy and into the brain it's really really important that your body learns how to do this because initially it's addicted to carbs because we grow up on carbs and carbs work like jet fuel like burn real high, burn real fast, but then you crash and you burn out. That's when you get sleepy. Ketones just are nice and even. They're not octane. They give you energy, but they don't like make you like you're, you've drank like 20 cups of coffee type of energy. They're like, they keep you like chilling. When you do a workout, you can do a long workout without crashing and just be able to get through the whole thing. It's amazing. A lot of people think that on a ketogenic diet, you lose strength. And I'm like, the reason why people will lose strength trying to attempt to do a keto or carnivore, a ketotic carnivore diet, which is high fat, is because they're doing things incorrectly, typically too much protein, not enough fat, and they don't have their electrolytes balanced, and they have too much stress, which is still their body making sugar through gluconeogenesis without the presence of carbohydrates. Okay, the fats. So the top fats are going to be, like I said, all these animal fats. But a lot of you guys, if I show you what they look like, don't even know what lard looks like or don't know what tallow looks like. Or when people who are trying to transition from, you know, going from carbs into a carnivore or high fat ketogenic diet, they have a problem with their gallbladder and they do better with fat trimming. So let's see what this looks like. I was doing so much research on all the fats for the challenge because you guys know I'm doing a challenge. Woo! I'm doing a challenge and I'm really making sure that it's packed with information without overwhelming you. And uh, that takes time. It really, really takes time to get it right. And so here we have the fats. And I mean, when I say get it right, I mean, so you guys can understand what's going on. So here are some examples of some fats. These look great. When I look at some of these images, I'm like, these look fantastic. When I finally get my house built done and I have a proper kitchen, I'm going to do a lot more cooking videos to show you guys rather than using this RV camper. Because, yes, I'm in an RV camper. Um, I don't like to cook in this thing for the moment. The oven is like, like a Barbie doll size oven. Okay, as you can see here, for example, if I blow this up, we've got, uh, um, we've got, and no cheese. I didn't put cheese on here. Now this is, these are like, this, these are proteins. I said fats. Okay, so here this looks like lard and tallow. The first one up above looks like um, tallow, because tallow, I mean, sorry, lard, rather than then the thick, more like a block looks like tallow. And I'll describe these fats. <laughs> I can hear my horse. He's turning the water trough into a swimming pool. He bangs his water in it when he's, or his hoof in it when he's hot. Okay, yeah, so this here, this one, this definitely is lard. Lard, or, or you can take um, lard coming from bacon. When you guys are taking pork belly bacon and you're frying it, this is, let me show you what this looks like here on this side. Let's see here. So you, that drawing right there, check it out. This, like, it's amazing, right? So it's more stiff right now because it's been in the refrigerator. Let's see if it's, can do a full scoop of this. But as you can see, it's pretty creamy. It's nice and soft, but what you can do, what I love about this, right? Okay. Is put some Celtic salt in this. 
like when you're cooking it, use Celtic salt. When it's in liquid form, before it solidifies in the refrigerator, put some salt on it. I mean, put Celtic salt on it and mix it. And then it can become like a spread, like a butter. Or you can put some uh, Italian herbs in it if you're doing a ketogenic diet. You don't have a histamine reaction to herbs or a little bit of garlic or a little bit of ginger <clears throat> in with salt, a divine as a spread. So people are like, I don't know how to eat fat. You can eat it straight in the mouth or you could plop it on your food. But as you can see, this is pork lard and this is from making bacon fat. Now, a lot of you guys are afraid of pork. You're afraid of the parasitical issue. And if you looked at my parasite video, all animals have parasites, people. People don't understand this. Cows have parasites. Pigs have parasites. The parasite that's most common in pigs, let me see. Okay, so to be more uh, specific on the parasite, that's right. Because if you check out my vi video I did on parasites, what's in, how they affect joints, muscles, how they are flat and pinworms, and tapeworms and roundworms, all these types of worms. Um, so it's called trichinella. Okay, so my horse, he's about 1,300 and something pounds. And when he's itching, he will rub against the wall of the camper and the whole thing shakes. So just bear with me. I'm going to get through this video. <laughs> I cannot wait to be in a home and in a studio without these types of interruptions. So the most common parasite in pork is called trichinella. Trichin trichinella, yeah. And it's a spiralis. And it's considered a roundworm. Ooh, I see a horse fly. It's considered a roundworm parasite uh, that infects most animals. But the thing that, w that humans are afraid of is the trichinella in pigs. And that's when it's uncooked, my people, or raw notes. So what it can do is it can create complications affecting the heart, lung, the heart lungs and the nervous system. But uh, trichinella, I believe, is also in cows and um, ruminant uh, uh, animals, grazers. And that's the thing. When you're, you know, when you're talking about back in old times and people would keep pin, uh, pigs in, in um, pens and then feed them like chum and throw it on the ground and they're eating where their poop is and then they're getting this trichinella and then you're eating uncooked pork that's when people start calling them unclean but they're not unclean if their animals are treated in good conditions when i went to um uh when i went down to brazil and also to ecuador i saw pastured pork in fields and fields and fields of pasture and it was just so nice to see pigs roaming freely for the first time. Now, let's get back to the image of the fat so I can give you guys a visual, right? So that was the lard that I have. And let's pull up some more images. So this looks like a beef tallow right there. And then you can also do fat trimmings. Okay, so here is some animal fat right there. And what people will do is they'll ask for these trimmings. Come on, computer, work with me. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, so my computer is not cooperating. I'm trying to blow up this, this uh, white stuff to the very far left of the screen. And there you see that people with gallbladder issues will cut that up and they'll air fry it. They'll grill it or they'll put it in the oven. 
and uh, this will make it very crispy and tender and juicy instead of instead of rubber, rubbery. So here we have some more beef fat. Oh, this is pork. It says making lard and tallow. And how you make this is you just put it in a pot and you just allow that stuff to just melt down. Right. And as you can see, when you put it in the refrigerator, it gets into a solid form, as you can see. So that's how you make the tallow. It's very easy. And if you don't put any um, seasons in it, you can just put salt in it for those who've got histamine response to any spices. But let's get into some more here. Okay. Let's see what fat trimmings looks like. Okay, this is what I recommend for a lot of you who have gallbladder issues. When fat is in a more solid form with a little bit of protein on it, it's much easier on the, the gallbladder rather than that tallow I showed you that I made. I have no problems with my gallbladder, so that's not a problem, but a lot of you do. And sometimes I'll have people, as they're trying to work out their gallbladder issues, either with flushes or doing tutka or oxbile or lipase or or um, taurine or glycine or any of these types of things that either supports the gallbladder or uh, you're taking in bile salts. Um, when you're trying to get this gallbladder to function properly or the lack of even having a gallbladder, you might start with something easier like fat trimmings and then go for, from fat trimmings, like 45 grams of fat trimmings on the plate, 45 to 60 to the oils, which is the lard that I showed you that I made. Okay, so I love these fat trimmings, but uh, let's get into it. There's also companies that make this stuff. I guess there's the Epic brand. There's fatworks.com. They are very popular. There's the Epic brand. And here's Fatworks. They do a wag Wagyu beef tallow. Yeah. But let's go into some of the background of these fats, right? This is giving you a good visual, you guys. Um, I should say cooked fat trimmings so you guys can see what cooked fat trimmings looks like. Hmm. This is grilled fat trimmings. This one here is a better example. That's when it's still in its own fat. Yeah. You can see over here, somebody's doing pork trimmings with the spoon in the image. Okay. So let's get into some details about this fat. So like I said before, we've got beef tallow, which has saturated fat, monounsaturated fat, and polyunsaturated fat. It also has omega-3s, omega-6, and vitamin E. That's in beef tallow. The nutrient breakdown in lamb fat is saturated fat, monounsaturated fat, polyunsaturated fat, omega-3 fatty acids, omega-6 fatty acids, and vitamin E. So you can see there's a very similar uh, nutrient profile in the fat, uh, the triglycerides, between beef tallow and lamb fat. Now, pork fat is high in saturated fat, very high in monosaturated fat, then poly. So everybody thinks that pork is just this poly, high acidic poof of fat. It's not because pork fat is also very high in monounsaturated fat. It also has omega-3s, omega-6, and vitamin E. Okay. So we've got salmon or salmon, which is a saturated fat, which has monounsaturated fat as the second ingredient, polyunsaturated fat, omega-3s, omega-6, vitamin D, B12, selenium. Okay. Then we have... Um, Sardines that also are primarily a saturated fat, then mono, then poly, then omega-3, omega-6, vitamin D, B12, selenium, calcium. So sardines are a great, the fat in sardines, if you're eating a, a fish that is has protein and fat, sardines are really great. These are high in fat. Now I want to get into the plant fats like avocado. Avocados are highest in monounsaturated fat. Then they have polyunsaturated fat. They have no saturated fat in them. There's omega-3s, omega-6, vitamin E, vitamin K, folate, potassium. Now, you guys know that I recommend the potassium for 
I mean, the avocado is for the potassium. I always think that people should ride the line between like a keto carnivore or an avocado vore, which is an avocado carnivore, and have an avocado day for the potassium because we lo we're losing electrolytes like this. Okay. So, but you can't have monounsaturated fats alone. Your body needs saturated fats to adapt. It needs LCTs, long chain triglycerides. Okay. So even though avocados have vitamin K and folate and potassium, um, we really need the saturated fat to adapt because we're made out of fats. Now this, the fatty acid structure in animal fat is way more um, ketone producing for some reason than coconut oil. In the beginning when I started coaching people, people were doing a lot of coconut oil and they just weren't getting the ketone register like they would animal fat. Now, so coconut oil is highest in saturated fats. As some, it has some medium chain, chain triglycerides, which are very tiny in its structure. That's why you do not need a gallbladder to consume and digest um, coconut oil. But the caprylic acid in coconut oil gives people diarrhea. Not everybody, so there's like an exchange. Olive oil is highest in monounsaturated fat. Then there's poly unsaturated fat, there's omega-3 fatty acids, omega-6, and vitamin E. Okay, so, but there's very small amounts with those omegas. Um, so your beef tallow does have trace amounts of iron and zinc, not a lot. Pork fat has trace amounts of iron and zinc as well. Salmon has calcium and selenium. Sardines have calcium and selenium as well because they're fish, seafood. Avocados, as far as minerals, minerals go, are super high in potassium, very low in copper. And um, all these meats also have zinc and copper in them when in terms of animals. Now, liver does, liver is mostly lean, right? Liver is notorious for um, copper and zinc for the gut, uh, selenium for the, for the thyroid, phosphorus for your bone and for energy and all this. Then we got potassium, which is an electrolyte, which is so important for the, you know, the, the communication between cells and um and also for your muscle contraction magnesium it uh is in liver but the, it's very small so if you guys think you're gonna get enough magnesium from liver you're not and then uh there's manganese and that is works sort of like um, helps your metabolism in terms of an antioxidant but let's keep going what you guys don't know is liver has vitamin c please let people open your mind to liver because it is the incredible organ meat this carnivore diet's on a lot of muscle meat meat are making people sick so we need some organ meats up in there now i want to talk to you guys about apoe or gene mutations this is very rare and some examples people are having and this is very rare i mean out of thousands of people maybe two people i, I really am like i wonder if they have apoe4 like they have no gallbladder problems, they just act, their body's just really weird with animal fats. So this is a gene mutation, which makes it difficult to consume these animal fats, highest in saturated fats. Now there are people with APOE4 that are absolutely fine with saturated fats, absolutely fine. So you gotta do some experimentation or book a consultation with me to figure out if you're that person who's got APOE4. Um, let's see here. So the, the, when I'm trying to break down APOE4 and it's interacting or interactions with saturated fats, it's the, it's the metabolism of cholesterol. So APOE is a protein involved in metabolism of cholesterol and triglycerides. It helps to transport lipid, lipids, fats into the bloodstream by binding lipo, lipoproteins. Uh, there are different variants of APOE. So people have heard of APOE, all the different numbers of APOE, four and two and three. Um, so the most common variants are the E, APOE, uh, APOE, E, uh, two and three. And then the most common common is APOE4. So LDL cholesterol and atherosclerosis, which uh, low density lipoproteins, cholesterol are often referred as bad fat, but they're not fat. So this is a whole nother subject. LDLs are proteins, they're transport carriers. They are not cholesterol. They are 
lipoproteins. Um, let's see what it says. The impact of APOE4 gene variant has been shown to affect cholesterol metabolism differently compared to other variants in individuals carrying one copy of APOE4. So, and this is homozygous APOE4 that in, impairs the clearance of the LDL lipoprotein from the bloodstream, leading to elevated levels and an increased propensity of atherosclerosis. So note the word they say propensity. That's not a fact yet. This is still a theory and it is not about the cholesterol. It's about the uh, LDL. Now let's go to the next section. I want to talk about uh, the fats with the highest cooking uh, heat points, right? Heat levels. So we've got ghee is number one. Obviously it's clarified. It's been cooked. So ghee has the highest smoke point, and this is around 450 degrees, 232 Celsius. And um, this is created by, of course, removing the milk proteins. That's why with some people with histamine intolerance can deal with ghee better than, than traditional butter, because ghee is made from butter by cooking it longer. Uh, beef tallow is the second one, which is the second highest, ranging from 400 to 420 Fahrenheit and 204 to 215 Celsius uh, for people around who are in Europe and other countries. Uh, this is by rendering the beef fat, which I spoke about before, which is taking the beef trimmings and putting them in a pot and let it melt down. Then when you use it later, it can handle a higher heat point when you fry it. Now there's lard, that's the third one, and it has a smoke point ranging from 370 degrees to 400 Fahrenheit and 188 to 204 Celsius. So we've got ghee number one, beef number two, and lard number three. Lard coming from pigs. So with the uh, oh yeah, with the plant fats, I've always known the avocado is the highest heat point. Everybody thinks it's coconut oil. It's not. It's avocado, and that uh, is the next one. But I see that avocados are are smoking under 400, so I don't trust this. The next one is coconut oil. Then we have canola, which is garbage that gives you a heart attack. We ain't going through the rest. I ain't gonna even read the rest of the plant fats. They're useless. Um, I want to talk about egg yolks because if a lot of people have a histamine reaction to the yolks. But the people who don't, it is a great source of everything. It's got protein, it's got fat, it's got it's got omega threes in it, it's got um, cholesterol, which is amazing to help. It works as an antioxidant, which is amazing. It helps with your reproductive well, hormones. It helps with all your hormones. We need cholesterol. People don't understand. If we didn't have cholesterol in our body, we would be out off this planet forever in, in a nanosecond. So it also has vitamin A, which is so good for your eyes, not that carrot stuff, keratin. Then we've got vitamin D, vitamin E, and uh, we've got B12 in it, in the yolks, choline, and uh, which is great for, of course, the brain, the liver function, cell membrane structure. And we know that E is good for your skin and it works as an antioxidant. That's why people put vitamin E on their face. Uh, they also put A on their face in terms of retinol. Um, and has vitamin D for uh, to help absorb calcium. Now the minerals in yolks are iron, selenium, and phosphorus. Let's see. It also has CLA, CLAs and and ALL, ALA. So it's a uh, conjugate linoleic acid. So this is in the egg yolks and has anti-inflammatory benefits. Uh, the CLAs have anti-cancer benefits, and the ALAs I already said CLAs. Both CLAs, CLAs have have antioxidant and anti-cancer. ALA, ALAs, which is alpha linoleic acid, which is um, which is it's got omega threes, but it doesn't have EPA, DHA in it. So, oh yeah, oh no, it does. It does. Wait. ALA is essential omega threes found in plants, but they don't have those plants don't have the uh, um, the DHA, I believe. And let's say here hmm. now in liver, you do have fat soluble vitamins, but like I said, they're very low. You have vitamin D, E, A, and K, but it's low. These are all fat soluble vitamins. 
And let me see if there's anything else. Mm -mm. Okay. The last thing I want to mention is how these things should be stored, right? Because somebody asked me that on one of my social media things, like how long can these be things be stored once you once you render the fat, my people? How long can this stuff be stored? Now on the counter, it can be out for like a week. In your refrigerator, this lard or tallow or butter or whatever can last three or four months. And in a freezer, it can last a year or longer. So that's very, very important to understand. So as you can see with all these types of fats, um, the thing that I want people to really understand is I want to break down what was in all of these fats, the different types of fats. These are the top fats. It would not be the plant fats. It would be the animal fats. I just wanted to break down what's in all of these um, types of, of fats. And also like avocados are great. They're a great source of fat, but they're not very ketogenic like an animal fat is. And also I wanted to say that um, avocados also have potassium. Um, they're also good for your skin and things of this nature. But to drive ketosis, you always want to have animal fats. That's fish, like sardines, like salmon, like uh, you want to also have ruminants, like cow and lamb and beef. Um, these are very, very important types of fats that have your saturated fats in there. And they all have Every animal fat has all three. They've got saturated, mono, and polys, all of them. And people really become confused about pork fat. Pork fat is very, very good for the brain. Think about the, the centurions that live over 100 in Okinawa. The main source of meat and fat that they eat is coming from pigs. So people need to understand the importance of pork fat is so good for the brain. Not just the lauric acid that's in like coconut oil, but also the pork fat for the brain. Uh, yes, you need to have over 200 grams of fat to start with on your plate. So people are like, how do I eat it? If you have a hard time with rendered fat like this, then start with the fat trimmings. And as some of the pictures I, I pulled up, you can see that it's been fried in its own fat. And then it's like, especially when you're done cooking it and you eat it, it's divine. Also, there's a lot of fat in thymus, which also I went out and did a video that the importance of thymus for your white blood cell count and also for the production of diamine oxidase. But when you put that in an air fryer, it's so greasy and so fatty and so divine. I hope this helps my people. Yes, because we need fat for the dermis layers. I think this is the why, the why, the reason why I at 55 going on 56, I've been in ketosis for 16 years. I believe that Fat has been getting into the dermis layers of my skin for all of these years, as you guys can see. Um, as you guys can see, I believe that fat has been helping me with my reproductive hormones, with my skin, with my lungs, because they are in the lining of your lungs, the lining of every cell. You get all the benefits of all these nutrients that I just mentioned, like the CLAs and the ALAs and the vitamin D, E, A, and K. And the omega threes, uh, the EPA, DHA. These things are so important um, for just keeping the cell from oxidizing and turning you into a an apple that's been bitten that's browning. Right? We don't want to oxidize. We want to keep our bodies very healthy. I'm going to do another video called the toxic bucket overload. What foods oxidize you? I no longer will buy my food from the supermarket. I'm looking into getting an avocado tree that's winter resistant for my yard. And so I can go and preserve avocados. By the way, you can put avocados, meat in freezers. Um, it'll be a little soft when you unfreeze it. Or you can dehydrate them um, or you can make, you can uh, can them, but then there you have to make like a, a guacamole out of them because I have a feeling in the next months or years soon, like to come, food will be either so expensive or you're going to have a bunch of, uh, was it, um, uh, Mr. Mr. Bates labeling on the outside that I don't want the, that produce anymore. 
Uh, I really recommend you guys going and finding uh, farms nearby. And if you really want to be healthy because eating toxic food, anything that's toxic, anything that's a heavy metal, anything that's pesticide is going to go into your fat, lodge into it and keep toxifying you for a very long time, if not getting into the liver. But with that said, yeah, it's really, really, really important to get into ketosis, eat animal fat. If you have a gallbladder issue, you got to work that gallbladder issue out, whether, whether if you have sludge, stones, or no gallbladder whatsoever. Understand what fats that you can consume, how to preserve them. Understand histamine. You can have histamine to some of these animal fats. You got to pay attention to the symptoms like itchy throat. You have to pay attention to feeling tired or bloated or having a hard time swallowing things like gag reflexes. You have to pay attention to not sleeping well, heart palpitations. If you're eating any of these top fats on carnivore or keto or even low carb high fat, um, yeah, diversify your foods, rotate them because everything has a different type of bacteria load on it, which like, again, like I said, every once in a while you need some type of fiber to keep the bacteria balanced in the colon to keep the production of diamine oxidase. Uh, these these details are important, and if you can learn your own body and understand what your body can tolerate, then as you go longer and longer into a keto into a state of ketosis or being ketotic, like I am, I am. You don't have to be worried about having any thyroid issues or energy issues or any type of crisis that other people were having that were doing high protein carnivore, like maybe respect like Paul Saladino who switched to fruit, who, who I guess his energy tanked and getting into ketosis isn't a joke. You cannot play with it. You cannot eat a bunch of protein and say you're eating a lot of fat and think that you're in ketosis. It just doesn't work that way. Protein spikes your blood sugar and tanks your ketones or the viability uptake of them. So it's all a thing. So you guys want to learn more, go to stephanieperson.com. Get ready for the challenge because all of this stuff, this 30 something video, 37 minute video. I'm going to condense it all down to one page and uh, that you can just read. I will also accompany a lot of these lessons with videos. So for those who are into audio learning and uh, yeah, and I'll be cooking some things too, even in this small ass camper, get ready. Again, if you need to book a consultation, my calendar is wide open. Go to stephanieperson.com. You can uh, join my course page and have access to me and ask direct questions and lessons at stephanieperson.com for my course, which is a monthly subscription. The challenge is something different. That's a 30-day challenge. Signups are not ready yet, but soon. Also, life is good. I moved from California to then Texas, hated it. I looked at the weather in Texas right now. It's over 100 degrees every day, reaching 109 with high humidity. And right now we're sitting at like 79 degrees in Tennessee and I'm chilling. You know, people are like, oh my God, get ready for the heat in Tennessee. I was like, girl, you ain't never been no, to no South Texas. Stop, quit. You don't even know what you're talking about. Nothing can be as hot as that experience was with no trees. I remember Thunder was getting sunburned nonstop with his pink skin. It was awful. There's so many trees here. It's not as hot. He can temperature regulate a lot better. Life is good. I will be building this house very soon. I'm going to be doing a barn dominium. I'm going to be doing a cost effective on the cheap, a barn dominium. So I'm not rich. People think I'm rich. I'm not rich. I'm not rich. So I want to show you guys how to do a DIY house build. I mean, I'm using a contractor, but a lot of stuff I'm going to make myself. I got all the tools ready to go. So get ready, right, for the plumbing and the electricity and those the walls <clears throat> and the decorum. It's going to be a decor, not decorum, decor. And that's it. Energy. 16 years and counting in ketosis. I'm 55, going on 56. And life is good. Life seems so scary before, but once you understand who you are, Life is good. Stay strong, my people. Peace.